back of the mail and big capitals you all want us to lose. Pep Guardiola claimed the entire country wants Liverpool to win the Premier League. Similar headlines across the majority of back pages. Back of the Times, country wants us to fail. Back of the Mirror, you love Klopp and want us to flop. And one more for you, back of the Sun, it's Prem against us. Laura and Tony, is he right? Mm, I would say I know how he would get that impression. Like I do know how he'd get that impression. Um, but I sport Arsenal, so I don't mind who wins. <laughs> so I, I think it's very individual, isn't it? I really, yeah. I really don't mind. I think he's referring to what we were speaking about last week. In that, there's newspaper articles that are saying, "Look, it's better if Liverpool, better for football in this country if mm. Liverpool wins because." The way that they've managed to get to the top is, is a far more organic and economically friendly way of doing it in terms of the money mm. that they put in. And I think there will always be, with Manchester City, whether it's right or wrong, mm. there will always be a feeling that perhaps they um, had a lot of money injected into the league and it, and it created success for them. Mm. And I don't think you can argue with, with that. Well, I would say, Sam, that I've been working the media for 22 years. There is a lot of Liverpool fans in the media. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay? Yeah. And I could pretend and lie to you, but there's loads of columnists, you know, including myself, you know, all have got the element of Liverpool. I'd just like to think that we're all not having a bias against other teams because that's not our job. Our job is to is to be honest on everything, including Liverpool. Um, I try and always think about that. As a, as a fan, that you know, I have to speak about openly about what I see with Liverpool and other clubs, Man United, Chelsea, whoever. I mean, that's your duty. But there are an awful lot of Liverpool fans within media. That is definitely true, and I think Pep knows that. He feels it, and he feels. You know, you talked about the article where you know last year a, a journalist had written a column that was the opposite of what he said this year. Mm. So it, it it feels. I, I'm sure it feels for him that you know there is a a, sort of a Liverpool bias. OK, um, that Man City won 5-0. Um, after the game, guys, I really enjoyed a debate in the Sky Sports studio between Carragher, Richards, Redknapp on whether Pep Guardiola should sign Paul Pogba this summer on a free. Redknapp and Richards said yes. Uh, they think he's got a lot of quality. Pep can finally bring the best out of him in the Premier League. Jamie Carragher adamant saying no, doesn't work hard enough. Not a Pep Guardiola type of player. Um, you've been writing about Pogba mm. in your column today in the Times, in the brilliant game pull-out. Just tell us, Cass, your thoughts on this and what you've been writing this morning. Well, I, I'm, look, first and foremost, <laughs> Pogba is an enigma in some ways because he's such a gifted player. He's got everything. Cause no manager in the world would not want Paul Pogba. Um, I have a problem that I don't think he fits into the narrative of what City are about, and that is even the very best players have worked their socks off and will do the ugly things in the game. I don't think he's shown that enough for Manchester United. No one's questioning his ability. I've met one ex-footballer mm -hmm. who said Popo is n not a huge talent. We all think the same. Um, a, a massive, massive player. That sh I, in some ways, you go, he's underachieved. He's won the World Cup. Mm -hmm. But you think in his club performances and what he's done for United, they've not challenged enough. And he was a world record fee. I just don't... I think it'll unsettle more. I just don't believe Pep would take a, a player of that risk. Would you pay him more than Kevin De Bruyne? Absolutely no chance. No chance that Pep would rock the you know the boat yeah. to bring in someone that probably would get a contract worth more than Kevin De Bruyne. And that's not going to happen at Man City, without a doubt. Yeah, and I guess you look at this City team, Laura, we can talk all we want about the great football they play they've got some world class players but the thing that still always baffles me that I find incredible is their work rate you know they can be 4-0 yeah. up in a game with two minutes to go and whether it's Bernardo Morris Foden they press 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 and you look at Paul Pogba you just can't see him fitting into that system can you maybe as well as, as I don't know what they're going to do with, with the striker because this conversation is going to come around the whole time until they pretty much sign a striker but I don't know if they need him do they need him do they need Paul Pogba well, no, they've got brilliant midfielders. Yeah, um, I, I think it would be a, a risk that Pep will not even entertain. I just don't believe that that would be the case. Um, he, I think he'll... Look, he's on a free transfer. He's going to go abroad. And by the way, when you go abroad, you also get more money mm. because the sign-on fees abroad uh, generally are mm. up front, which in, in England is over the duration of your contract. So he's going to earn way more by going abroad. Maybe as well for Paul Pogba. He's not looked happy for a, for a long time. No. And that might be Manchester United. It might be England. might be the Premier League. Maybe a, a break from that, a step away from that 
is the right thing that he needs. We've we've seen players go abroad to Italy, to to France, to anywhere really, to Spain, and actually their careers flourish when they need a break. And and, and Laura, on that, which is really this is a really important point. You're right about you know he might need to change the environment mm. that he's living in. Also. We can quite clearly say now that Pogba isn't the really big problem at Man United. From what's happened this weekend and just before, you know, you can now say, well, look, he's not been in the team. He's not responsible. Like Maguire, there is a, 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 a disease that's happened at United where work rate, well, what was that Saturday? What, where was the work rate mm-hmm. in Man United on Saturday? You know, Pogba's been questioned so much on this and um, I think he's been a scapegoat. But now we're looking at it from a different lens, I think. Mm. Just one more for you. A big win yesterday as well uh, for Everton away at Leicester, up to 16th, a point above 18th Leeds with a game in hand. Mirror Football pull out the headline praise the George Frank Lampard held as keeper Jordan Pickford after another heroic performance helped Everton out of the relegation zone just a week after he almost single-handedly foiled Chelsea Pickford frustrated Leicester. Um, a lot of love for Everton in the papers and a lot of papers focusing Cass on another brilliant performance by Jordan Pickford. Um, okay, all right. That was Sam Kerr's goal, by the way. No, it was a good goal as well, wasn't it? Um, but look, a keeper perhaps who at times in the past has maybe been quite inconsistent for Everton, but certainly over the past couple of weeks, well, he showed everyone why he's a top-class goalkeeper, Cass. I'd like to think, and nothing's been said on this, and I talked a little bit about it on the on yesterday on the weekend sports breakfast, there's that Alan Kelly's goalkeeping coach. I'd like to think he's played a big part in improving him. Yeah. Um, I know Alan was with him with the Republic of Ireland, um, and I, I think Pickford's improvement is structured around the way Alan was a goalkeeper. Because he was an incredible hard worker. I mean, the the one the save he made against Chelsea. You know, when you get the keeper goes down on the ground, bounces back up, springs back, and gets across yeah, the yeah. That's that. an exercise that I can remember Alan Kelly doing <laughs> really? regularly about the time that you go down on the floor and how you how sharp you have to be to get up off the floor and get to the other side of the, the goalpost and make a save. You know, and look, he's not that Jordan. Also, is I think he's matured a hell of a lot. Never, he's always been an incredible goal, uh, shot stopper. Mm. His only things I, I think he struggled with was rash decision making at mm. times. It wasn't his goalkeeping. I mean, Gareth Southgate must think the world of him. He's never even considered dropping him. Why would he? He's been brilliant for England. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.